Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for giving me the chance to be with you tonight. Could I start by um, and making an announcement my friend Anthony, who's encouraging people to tweet on that hashtag, Ashcam Doctors, for those of you who are tweeting tonight. Um, look, I'm really, really <coughs> pleased to be with you here today. I, before I got into Parliament uh, back in May, I worked for Unison, the trade union, for over a dozen years. And you will know that um, many people who work in the health service are represented by Unison. And over those years, the one thing that came back to me constantly was that the one thing Unison staff never ever wanted to do was take industrial action. Absolutely the last resort. We negotiated on their behalf. As you've already heard, sadly, government failed to respect the independent pay review body. It's really hard for people. What do you do? But people really, really don't want to take industrial action. In all my years as a trade union official, and I've been a trade union member many years before that, so long involved in the trade union movement, a ballot result of 98% on a 76% turnout is just extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. I was talking to someone earlier, I think looking back to try and see if we could find another result like that. 98%. What does that tell you? And I just hope Jeremy Hunt reflects on this because it's near universal. Now I look around the audience tonight and it's a predominantly young audience which I think reflects the workforce. You're not coming from some militant tradition in the past. You're responding to a very real, real problem. And you are absolutely, absolutely unanimous. Now that's got, surely, to tell people something about this dispute. So to me, it's abundantly clear. Now, I was in the House of Commons earlier this week, and Heidi was as well. We were both at Health Questions. And I'm sure Heidi will tell you about the very good question that she put to the Health Secretary. I also put a question. What struck me looking at him, and one of the things about the House of Commons is you are very close, as close as, as we are here. He looked to me like a man who's under strain, under pressure, and rightly so, because he's got himself into a position that he should never needed to get into. There was no need to get to this point. I think he should step back, step back and think, we do not need this. We do not need this dispute. And exactly as has been said, the offer is there to have those discussions, but without preconditions. And that doesn't mean exactly as has been said, no preconditions, and then going on to list what they are. So I'm afraid that was exactly what happened in the House of Commons again the other day. So I think he's got to draw back. And in politics, sometimes you just have to admit you've got it wrong. And I've said this in other contexts as well, that when you've got it wrong, actually the public they don't condemn people for admitting they've made a mistake. Actually, I think people think more of people who say we've got it wrong and we're going to go back and think about it again. That would be the sensible thing to do. And I think there would be widespread support from across the political spectrum. And other people are not going to be crowing or claiming victory on this. We just want this issue to be settled. Now, I was delighted to attend the parliamentary briefing that, that you gave a few weeks ago. And I suspect I'm going to steal some of your lines. But I was very struck with some of the points you made, particularly about the, the makeup of the workforce, which is now predominantly female. Now, that's really interesting to me. Again, the popular conception of people on strike, and I'm afraid the national media has, has some responsibility for, for mischaracterising people on this. And the, the kind of images that are summoned up are from a, a distant industrial past, of blokes huddled around braziers outside factories. That's not what you are. You are professional people, young people, mainly women, who are responding <coughs> to a very, very difficult situation. Now, you also explained to me, and this is something, again, which I don't think I've been particularly aware of, that it's in the nature of the job that, that many of you have relationships with other health staff, other doctors. It's just the way it is. It's exactly what you'd expect. But what that means is that when you're struggling with these difficult hours and you've got children, there's nobody else to come and help with the childcare if you're suddenly needed. These are difficult things that people are facing. And I'm not sure the public understands that either. And listening to the government, I'm not sure they understand that either. And the point was just very well made about the fact that you are the future cohort that will be essential to making our National Health Service work. 
and that many of you have got choices. You don't necessarily have to stay in our National Health Service. If it becomes so difficult, why wouldn't you go somewhere else? <coughs> I'll finish on this point. I'm a Labour politician because to me, the National Health Service represents every single thing that I value in this country. And if you ask the public, <coughs> the National Health Service is what they value about this country too. And I want our National Health Service to succeed in future, and it cannot succeed without you. So, I warn you, because I've been through these things before, this is not going to be easy. You will be misrepresented, you will be unfairly portrayed, you will need people to stand up for you. My pledge to you tonight is, when it gets difficult, as it might, I'll be there with you. I'll be standing up for you. I've done TV interviews today and actually, interestingly, reflected very much some of the points that you've already made about what happens at the end of a shift. But it won't be easy. I wish you well. Your cause is just. I hope, hope, hope that Jeremy Hunt takes up the offer that Heidi Alexander, Labour's Shadow Health Secretary, suggested that this should go to ACAS immediately. That would help. If that were done, then you can go back to work and Cambridge can go home knowing that they're in safe hands. Thank you very much.